God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. We realize our sister last met, that have had to answer the call of death, but God's been good to us. Allowed us to this side of life just a little while longer. And we realize and we recognize that God didn't have to do it, but we're sure thankful that God did. What a joy, what a great privilege this really is to be able to come back, come back home again. I always consider this, I knew going to Heights my home, and I just appreciate so much uh, Dr. Washington and, and the confidence he has in me to come and share with you my faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, it was here where I really was able to cut my teeth and really had a great interest and desire uh, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's always good to be here. It's good to see Sister Washington and so many others uh, who are still dear to me after all these many years. It is so good to see you and thank God for you that you're still holding on to the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. It's always good to have Sister Pounds with me. Uh, she's with me, as we know, oftentimes I travel. She doesn't always have an opportunity to come with me, but I'm glad that she is here with me on today. She's just good to look at. After 27 years of marriage, sometimes I just look at her. She just wonder what I'm looking at. She's looking. I just like to look at her. She's a, she's a beautiful woman. Help me understand. I made a good choice over 27 years, 27 years ago. Amen. That's, that's, my, that's my partner in crime. It's going to have Jerusalem. Which she was named by Dr. Washington. And so she's, she's my special child. Just graduated in May uh, with her degree in biology. And so y'all pray for her. Pray for her as she gets her, herself going. Now, with my 35 minutes. <laughs> oh, that song is out today, y'all. It's out today. It's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. I want you to come with me quickly. I want you to come. In my conclusion, I want you to come with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. And look at verse number 18. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18. The Bible says, 1 Peter 3, 18, For Christ also hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that it might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure, wherein to even baptism, doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven, and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Now, my text is, I'm, I'm going to take it off. My text is coming from verse number 20, which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was in preparing, wherein few that his eight soul was saved by water, the light figure, wherein to baptism would also now save us. Peter, as he writes uh, to the saints of Cappadocia, Asia, Pontus, and the surrounding areas who were going through the sufferings of that time, Peter was writing to them, telling them that there's not only benefits and burdens, but helping them to understand, to hold on even through that difficult time. And then he gets to chapter 3, and he reminds them of something. He tells them, he goes right back to their conversion. He reminds them of what happened at conversion, and which sometimes talks about the idea how Jesus went into prison, preached um, to those um, disembodied souls, dis disembodied souls in prison, prison in the Hadean world. Now, what he was saying was the idea he points us back to Noah to remind them of Noah. And he says how Jesus used the instrument he worked through Noah to preach to those individuals who were disobedient during the time of Noah. And the Bible tells us this, that God will use our men as instruments through which he works through in regards to speaking his word to his people. We see that, don't have time, jot it down. In the book of Nehemiah, the chapter is 9 and verse number 30, where the Bible said that God used 
our prophets, use his spirit to speak through the prophets. We see also Jesus in Ephesians chapter 2. And the verse is number 17. How Jesus spoke to both Jew and Gentile. But we know while he was on earth, he was not speaking to Gentiles, but he used the instrument of men in regard to conveying his message to those individuals of their day. And so the Bible says, now Peter says that those individuals during the time of Noah, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited. That's how awesome God is. He has a long suffering that waits. And God's been waiting on some of us a mighty long time. He said, which once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing. Wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. He reminds them about Noah. Then he said, the light figure. And in other words, that's mathematics. It will be an equal sign. Just like Noah's ark performed then. He said, where the baptism doeth also now saves us. He makes a comparison between baptism and the ark of Noah. And what I want to do, I end my 32 minutes left, I just want to show you a comparison between baptism and the ark of Noah to help us understand there was only one mean, one mode of salvation then. There's only one mean, one mode of salvation today. And my friend, just like the ark saved then, baptism saves today. Come with me, Brother Keith. We're in the book of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. Watch what the Bible says. And God saw. And God saw. That the wickedness of man that was the great wickedness in of the man earth. was great on the earth. Watch and that every imagination. And every imagination. Of the thoughts. Of the thoughts. Of his heart. Of man's heart. Was only evil continually. You know, it sounds like 2015. Yeah. Because people today are so evil. We're living in a wicked world. You know, I mean, we're not safe anywhere. You go in the movie house, you are not safe. Right? Folk were climbing over the fence at the White House. You are not safe in the White House. You are not safe in the schoolhouse. You are not even safe, Lord have mercy, even in the church house. I said, there's no safety anywhere. It's amazing. But the Bible says their heart was on evil continually. Yes, now watch the Bible. Come on, Brother Keith. And it repented the Lord. Why? God had a change of heart. Why? In regards to intent. The intent by which God made man. Man was not doing what God intended for man to do. Isn't it interesting, church? I don't have time. But isn't it interesting? Everything God made is still doing what God created it to do except man. Isn't that amazing that the same sun that we look at every day is the same sun that, that, that Adam was looking at? That that same is amazing um, to me that everything God created is still doing what God created it to do except us. Well, we saw, and we got the higher intelligence, but some wrong with us. And the Bible says his heart was evil continually. Come on, Rocky. And he repented the Lord that he had made man right. on the earth. The heart because the intent of man. Man, why was man was made? Don't have time. Jot it down. Isaiah forty three and verse number seven. Man was made to glorify God, but whenever man does not fulfill his intent, then man is not doing what God created him to do. And the book said, watch this, his heart was on evil continually, and he repented God even made man. Come on. And it grieved him and, at his heart. And it literally, sin broke the heart of God. Sin broke God's heart. Come on, Rocky. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, I will destroy man and I have created from the earth. Watch the face this. of the earth. Universal judgment now is getting ready to fall. Universal judgment is getting ready to fall on the whole earth. And the Bible said, Brother Key. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and man beast. And, beast. Come on. and the creeping thing. And the creeping thing. And the fowls of the air. The fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. Watch the change of heart in regard to the intent of man. Come on, read, sir. But Noah. Watch this now. But Noah. Found grace in the eye of the Lord. But you see, church has helped me to understand you can live right even though everybody else is not doing right. I said, in the midst of all of this corruption, the Bible said God found favor in one man. All right, come on, Brother Keith. These are the generations of Noah. Now watch this now. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Watch this now. Bible is saying 
say he was sinless, but the Bible says he was a just man. And a perfect in his generation. He was mature in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Watch the book, church. The Bible said that Noah walked with God. Yeah. Y'all notice that? The Bible didn't say God walked with Noah. Because God is not going to follow us. We're going to have to follow him. And the Bible said Noah walked with God. With God. Come on, read. And Noah begot three sons. No, this is not Noah got three more. Sham, Ham, and Japheth. No, don't miss that. I'm coming back there. Sham, Ham, and Japheth. He had three boys. And the Bible says. The earth also was corrupt the earth before also God. Was corrupt. Come on. And the earth was filled with fire. I told you something like 2015. The Bible said the earth was filled. You know, we in some sad days when you got parents afraid of their own children. You got children that are killed. It. You know, there was a time we had respect. Don't have time for that. But I said that was a time. Mom and dad didn't have to say nothing. They just had to look. And there was something in that look. That looks that I mess you up, you don't straighten up. Yeah, but nowadays mom and daddy look the kids, they looking back. Trying to figure out what you looking at. I said, but there was a time mom and daddy could hey, they, they were able to control us just by a look. Times have changed now. And the Bible says, and the book says, and God looked upon the earth. And God looked on the earth. And behold, and behold, it was corrupt. It was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way because upon the earth. Had corrupted his way on the earth. Come on. And God said unto Noah. Watch this now. God said unto Noah. The end of the all flesh is come before flesh me. Flesh is come up before me. For the earth is filled with violence. Because the earth is filled with violence. Through them. Through them. And behold. And behold. I will destroy them with the earth. God said, I'm going to destroy man with the earth. Watch the book, come on. Made thee an ark of gopher wood. In chapter, in verse, chapter 6, verse 14, he said, first of all, I want you to make an ark. Now, I want you to watch this now. One man was responsible. I said one man was responsible. One man's work, one man was put to work. In regards to this, I want you to watch this now. One man, it was one man then, irresponsible for the salvation of his house. There's only one man today. That's responsible for the salvation of his house. Don't have time, brother. Keep what the Bible says. God said, I want you to make thee an ark. Why are you going to make an ark? Because he's going to save his family. Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 7. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 7. The Bible said it was by faith. By faith that Noah being warned Word of God. God a thing not, not seen as yet. yet. Moved with fear. Bible said he moved with fear. Prepared an ark. He prepared an ark. To the saving of his house. Says, now why did he build the ark? For the saving of his house. By the way. He talked about house. It was not talking about the dwelling place. He was talking about his family. Just like there was only one place. In regards to what he did. In regards of saving his family. Jesus provides only one mean today by which he was going to save his family. I know we are the family of God. Bible said in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 6 that Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we? In other words, how did he save his house? Galatians chapter 3, verse number 26. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In other words, just like the ark saved Noah's family, it is the means of baptism that saves the family of God today. He said in verse number 14, watch this now, I want you to make thee an ark. Of gopher wood. And then he said, I want you to make it of gopher wood. In other words, it was going to be made of only one type of material. Just like the ark was made up of one type of of material. Baptism does the same thing for us today. It identifies those who are obedient to God. Bible help us to understand that baptism is how we obey God. Don't have time to deal with all of this, but Jesus said plainly in Mark 16 and verse number 15 to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He separates the heat that's going to be saved from the heat that's going to be condemned. Well, how did he separate them? He separated them by baptism. So the Bible says, make the an ark. Watch this now. He says, a go for wood. Now, I wish I had time. Brother Keith, don't have time. Don't have time. In about 27 minutes, I don't have time. But he says, what he says, go for wood. But we're going to see in just a moment, Brother Keith, that the ark was entirely too big to build it from just one tree. He was going to have to use more 
than just one tree. But every tree had to be the same type of tree. And the type of tree came from the same seed. Which meant every boy that made up the ark had to be the same type that came from the same seed. In Luke chapter 8 and verse number 11, the Bible said the parable is this, that the seed is the word of God. Bible tells, talk to us about the seed when Peter said, Sing, therefore you purified your soul and obeyed the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again. There it is, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God. My friend, I want you to understand in regards to the fact that he had to use more than one tree, but every tree had to be the same tree. In regards to the making up of the ark, what baptism does, it makes all of us the same. That's why the Bible says there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but you're all one in Christ Jesus. Baptism is the thing that unites us together, that brings us together and saves us and makes us a part of the family of God. He said, watch this now, make thee an ark of gopher wood. I'm at chapter 6 verse 14 of Genesis. Genesis 6 14, make thee an ark of gopher wood. And then he says, and rooms. Shall thou make it the ark. rooms shall thou, and that's resting places where you're going to rest. There's no rest on the outside. If you won't rest, you got to come on the inside. I heard the Bible says, after you who are troubled, uh -huh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, to you who are troubled, rest, rest with us. Gee, the Bible said, Hebrews 4 and verse number 9, that there remaineth the rest to the people of God. Then Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. In John 14, 1, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, Behold, I go, prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you might be also. If you won't rest, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heaven laden. And I, Jesus said, I'll give you, I'll give you rest. If you won't rest, you got to come to Jesus. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to hurry here. The Bible says, now watch this now. He said, make thee an ark. A go for what room shall thou make in the ark? I wish I, wish I had time for the key. He says, the rooms were going to be in the ark. Yes, sir. I said, if you want, back, if you want to be saved, you got to be in baptism. Yes, sir. Now, there is no rest on the outside. You got to come on the inside. All right, Brother Keith, in the book said, watch this, come on. And shall pitch it within now, and see, without now, with pitch. You see the word pitch? That word pitch comes from a Hebrew word, kafar, K-A-P-H-A-R. And that's the same word they get, atonement, which meant every board had to be atoned for. In other words, he could not add a board to the ark unless it was atoned for. What baptism does, it allows us to be added to the Lord's church. But the Lord had the same to the church. So without baptism, you cannot be atoned for. Without baptism, you can't experience ah, B, the new birth. C, you can't be clean. D, you can't be delivered. E, can't have eternal life. F, you can't be forgiven. G, you can't receive God's grace. H, and his Holy Spirit. I, you don't have an intercessor. J, you don't have Jesus. K, and his kindness. L, and his love. M, and his mercy. N, you can't be not a God in spirits. The new birth. O, he won't open up his arm. P, and party. You Q, quicken you. R, revive you. S, save you. T, transform you. U, unite you with him. V, give you victory. W, you'll wash. X, your past is excluded. Y, you're yoked up to him. Z, on your way to Zion, you must be baptized. He says, pitch, pitch now. And I wish I had time for the key because something else I learned about the pitch is the idea that it's one thing. The boards had to be close together. When we're baptized, we need to be close together. Because it's one thing for the boat to be in the water. It's another thing for the water to be in the boat. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. And I said, so folk in the church gotta learn how to be close together. And, and he says, and he said, pitch it within and without. And another thing, Brother Keith, he said every board pitch it within and without. Which means the board on the outside look the same as the board on the inside. I said, so many times, church folk, not y'all, y'all cousins I deal with up north. He said, we look one way at church, in the building, but we look another way on the outside. But he said the 
avoidance of the consistent is when they have pitch on the inside as well as on the outside. I got to hurry, Brother Keith, in my 23 minutes, and the Bible says, And this is the fashion which thou shalt make up in. Watch this now. He said, this is the pattern. He said, listen, he didn't just tell Noah just build a boat. He said, this is the pattern. And I want you to understand that baptism is a pattern. Then Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 17. In Romans chapter 6 and verse number 17, he said, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that two popes, that pattern of doctrine. But what was the pattern? He had already given them the pattern in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3 and verse number 4. He had given them the pattern. You remember Romans 6 and verse number 3 and 4, don't you know? That's a bit of us and we're baptizing that Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Baptized in his death. Look at verse number 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death and like it Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we ought to walk in the newness of life. What's the pattern? Is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the he said that they had received and allowed them to go from being servants of sin to being servants of Jesus Christ. That's the pattern. You have to die to the love and practice of sin. You got to be buried in the waters of baptism and then rise from the water to walk in the newness of life. That's the pattern that you have to follow. He said this, this is the fashion. This is the pattern, Brother Keith. This is the pattern. This is the pattern. All right, now watch the pattern. In other words, I wish I had time to deal with this uh, because you got some folk that don't believe in a pattern. But I just don't believe that the Lord will come all the way down here, build this church, and then tell us to worship, and then don't give us a pattern to follow. I, I just don't believe that. I just I, oh, don't have time. I just uh, Too much I have there to prove that there is a pattern for New Testament worship. But the Bible says, Brother Keith, watch the book. The length of the earth shall be 300 cubits. Don't, don't miss this church. Now, God said, I'm going to tell you how long I, now a cubit is 18 inches. Which means, so he's saying, it's going to be 450 feet long. Now, this, this ark is going to be 450 feet long. Come on, Brother Keith. And the breadth of it, 50 cubits. He says, it's going to be 75 feet wide. And the height of it, 450 feet long, it's going to be 75 feet wide. And the height of it, 30 cubits. And it's going to be 45 feet high. Look at what God is doing. He said, I want you to build it now. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Brother Keith, if you were, if you were in a helicopter looking down at something that's 450 feet long and only 75 feet wide, it would look like a floating coffin. It would look like a coffin floating yeah. in the water. Because see, baptism is connected to death. We are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. Don't you realize now, when they go in the ark, they're going to be surrounded. When they go in the ark, remember that the ark is made of gopher wood. Which meant that the wood had to be cut down. The wood had to be sacrificed in order for them to be saved. They were going to be surrounded by death. Trees that had to die for their salvation. I come by here to tell you baptism is the same way. Christ died and we are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. I don't have time. We don't have time for the key. But the book says now, he tells him in regards to this ark, he says, tell him how long the building, how wide, how, how 45 feet high. And then he says, Brother Keith, come on. A window shall thou make the don't, ark. Don't, don't miss this now. He says, in this big old structure, there's only one window. Only one window in this big old structure. Big structure, one window. What's the purpose of a window? Two purposes. Two purposes of a window. Number one, a window is a, is a two words. Two words put together. Compound. Wind door. It is a door for the wind. I said, the first thing a window is, is a door for the wind. Well, well, how does that how does that compare for the power of the baptism? Well, you remember in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was they come, they're all in one place, one accord, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as says a rushing. The Holy Spirit is stylized as the wind. Which meant they could not benefit from the window if they were on the outside. You can't benefit from the Holy Spirit unless you're on the inside. You got to be baptized to access the Spirit of God. All right, come on with you, Brother Keith. Come on with you.
with Brother Keith. Amen. 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 I'm going somewhere with Brother Keith. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to Romans chapter 5 and verse number 5. Then I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Then I'm going to Acts chapter 5. Verse number 32, I'm going to conclude in Acts chapter 2. Verse number 38, if you can't, if you can't write that fast, Brother Keith, that's all right. It's downloaded in my mind. All right, first of all, Bible said in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 5. Watch what the Bible says. And hope make it not ashamed. Make it not ashamed. Because the love because of God is shed abroad, abroad, abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Which is given unto us. You watch this now. You don't have to pray for it. Right. The Bible said the Holy Spirit is given. Bible said it's given to us. You don't have to tarry for it. Bible said it's given. Well, I want to know who gives it. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 8. He that therefore, by, he therefore, that despises, that despises not it, man, despises not man, but God, but God, who hath also who given has, us, look, who hath given unto us his Holy Spirit. God gives us the Holy Spirit. Look at what we have. Holy Spirit is given. Yes. And then number two, we find out that God is the one that gives the Spirit. Yes. Now the question becomes, when does God give the Spirit? Acts chapter 5 and verse number 32. Watch the Bible. And, and we are his witnesses. And we are his witnesses. Of these things. Of these things. And so is also and the Holy so Ghost. Also, so also is the Holy Ghost. Who God hath given to God him. Hath given to him. That obey him. You see, you don't have to tarry for it. The Bible says if you obey, God will give it to you. Wish I had time because you got some folk trying to pray for the Holy Spirit. You don't have to pray. You just need to obey Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse number 38 of the individuals who obeyed God and God gave them his Holy Spirit. Bible said then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you, one of you in the in name, the of, name Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ for the remission, for of, sin, remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the gift and it's a gift keep that just keep on giving. Thank God the Bible said now if you want to benefit from the spirit about the lost books and what about these lost books and folk want to know about lost books and that's always fascinating to me that people want to talk about lost books we can't even keep the books we have and follow the ones we have and always looking for some lost but let me just help you to understand something I'm running now but the Bible says in John chapter 20 and verse number 30 many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but the Bible said but these are written that you might believe and believing you might have life through his name I just believe brother Keith this just me in my study brother Keith I just believe there's something special about those 66 books that we have and that canonizes scripture I believe there's something special about the 66 let me just give this to you and I'm moving on y'all remember when God told when God gave destruction to Moses a long time ago and when God told him in regards to building that tabernacle y'all remember that now you remember as they came uh, into the tabernacle proper first thing they had to do that was a brazen altar and at the brazen altar you remember a sacrifice had to be made in other words some blood had to be shed and after the blood was shed, the next thing you went to was a laver. It was a bronze laver where they had to wash. In other words, the blood was shed and then they were washed. They couldn't benefit from the blood unless they washed. And then they came into the tabernacle. They came through one door. Y'all remember that? They came to one door. And when you went through the door of the tabernacle, it was called the holy place. And y'all remember, on the right side, there was a table of showbread. And in the back, there was that veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place. And right in front of the veil, there was an altar of incense. But what I want to try to call your attention to quickly, in, in my 16 minutes, uh, to the left, when you went into the tabernacle, there was beaten uh, of gold. There was a gold candlestick. I said there was a gold uh, candlestick. And that, that, that candle uh, stick was there. And it was the only source of light for the whole place, the holy of holy. I don't have time to show y'all, but Jesus in Hebrews 8 and 9 tells us that the holy place represents the church. And the most holy place represents heaven. Which means that you could not access the holies of holy unless you went through the holy place. That's why I know if you're not in the church, you can't be saved. 
but I want to talk about the golden candlestick. And the book Bible says in Exodus 25, uh, and, and begin around verse 31, it talks about this golden candlestick. Now, I said there's something special about 66 because God told Moses, I want you to build it. It's going to have three arms uh, on the left side of it. And then it's going to have three arms on the right side. And then in the middle, it was going to have a middle post through which the three arms were going to come. Now he said on each one of the arms that there was going to be a bowl. And in the bowl, it was going to be an almond bud, an almond flower, and the almond fruit. He said on three, and which means decorated on one arm. You're going to have nine decorations on one arm. What's the purpose? It was going to give light to the holy place on one arm. It was nine decoration, three. Uh, each arm had nine decoration, Brother Keith. So nine times three is 27. On the left side, it was 27. On the right side, you had three arms, but it had those decoration, three bowls with it had the almond, bud, the flower, and the fruit. So you had 27 on one side, and you had 27 on the other side. But in that center post, he said, I don't want you to put three, but I want you to put four bowls there. And the bowls were going to have the bud, the flower, and the almond fruit. So look at what we had. You had, you had on one side, where the key, you had 27, and, and the other side, you had 27. That's 54. But in the middle, you were going to have 12. And when I add them all up together, the thing that gave light, God said, I want 66 decorations on that golden candlestick. I just believe there's something important about the 66 that gives light to the Lord's church. Don't have time for all of that right now. Don't have time. I got eight minutes, Brother Keith. Got eight minutes. Now the Bible said, Brother Keith, now watch the book. Now we're back in Genesis. Brother Keith, I'm running. I'm back in Genesis now. And back in Genesis, he told them now, he said, in regards to this window, he said, in regards to the window, the windows that was allowed to not only one access the Holy Spirit, but it gave light. And then the book says, and then the book says, Brother Keith, uh, after it, it gives light, he said, one window. And then he said, that one door, you're going to put in the side. Yes, sir. Brother Keith, there's only one door. Which means that's the way you're going to access. Yes, sir. Only one door in the ark. Where you're going to put it? I'm going to put it in the side. Yes, sir. And that's very powerful. Brother Keith, you don't have time. Because that's the same way Christ Christ got his bride because of the side. Yes, sir. Yeah, you remember? The first Adam, God put him to sleep, opened up his side. But when Christ died on the cross, that soldier opened up his side. And when he opened up Adam's side, he got a wife. When he opened up Christ's side, he got his wife. And all of that happens, my friend, in baptism. Because out of the side of Christ came the blood and came the water. When you go in the waters of baptism, you're going to contact the blood of Jesus Christ. Wish I had time to help y'all understand that something about a door. A door determines how you enter. I said a door determines how you enter. I was talking one day um, to a brother. As a matter of fact, uh, it was a couple of years ago. I was in uh, Illinois, and I was talking um, to a, another situation. I was talking to Brother Leroy Butler. He came to Rockford, did a gospel meeting for us, and he and I was talking one day. And when I was taking him to the bank, and what happened was I was talking so much, I didn't pay attention. I was pushing the door in the middle of the day. I was pushing the door, but the door didn't open. I was talking so much, I should have paid attention to the door. The door said pull. Which meant the door determined how we went in. And it's the same way today. Who is the door? John chapter 10, verse number 9. Jesus said, I am. I am the door. So therefore, it's Jesus who determines how we enter in. And Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Jesus said that. I got to hurry. got to hurry, Brother Keith. I keep saying that. After a while, I'm going to believe that. He said, now, nah, there's only one door. And you put it in the side of the ark. Come on, Brother Keith. And the Bible said, and behold, and behold, I will even I do bring a flood of water. I'm gonna bring a flood of water upon the earth, upon the earth. Come on, to destroy all flesh, destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of, life. breath of life? Come For on. under heaven, under heaven, and everything that is in the earth Watch shall the die. Universal judgment. Come on, brother Keith. Come on. But with thee, what with you? I was will I establish my covenant. Okay. But see, listen. He says I'm gonna establish a covenant with you because y'all going in the ark. I'm establishing a covenant. You see, baptism is a covenant. Yes. It is a covenant that we go in with God. We don't have time. We don't have time. Go, go back to Galatians chapter 3. And you spend, no, 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 not your brother Keith. In your spare time, read that. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and following. It talks about the idea of the covenant. We're in a covenant relationship 
We're with the Lord in baptism. And the Bible said, Brother Keith, watch the And thou shalt come into the ark. Thou shalt come into the ark. Thou and thy son. Thou and thy son. And thy wife. Thy wife. And thy son wives with thee. With you. And on every, no, and on every living thing. Every living thing. And now watch this now. He says, uh, he said, Lord, you go in. Yeah. Yeah. Your wife, she go in. Uh -huh. You got three boys, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. They go in. Yeah. And they got three wives. They go in. Which means now, when Noah married, Miss Noah, she wore his name. He had three boys, and the three boys wore the father's name. When the three boys married those three girls, everybody in the ark had the same name. When it come down to baptism, it makes all of us have the same name. Thank God for the name Christian. It is a name that we wear. It is a name that is higher than any other name. Thank God for the name Christ. Christ's name. Someone said we took Christ out of Christian. You are left with I A N, which means I ain't nothing without Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. If I had time, don't have time. Woo! I would run the ABC run right there because I would tell you, woo, that they makes all of us one. Uh huh. Not Anglican, B, not Baptist, C, not Catholic, D, not disciples of Christ, E, not Episcopalian, M, not First Assembly, G, not Church of God in Christ, H, not Holiness, I, not Independent Baptist, J, not Jehovah Witness, K, not Kingdom Living, L, not Lutherans, M, not Methodist, N, not New Birth, O, not Open Fellowship, P, not Pentecostals, Q, not Quakers, R, not Reformers, S, not Seventh day Adventist, T, not Theological Society, U, not Unitarians, V, not Victory Outreach, W, not Watchtower Society, X, Got to skip over X. Don't you know they start with X. Why? Not Y M C A Z, and not the Zealous. And because none of them start with X, X every word of them because none of them can be obtained in baptism. I got to hurry, brother Keith. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. And he tell them that back in Genesis chapter six, he and on every living thing, everybody had the same name. And I wish I had time, brother Keith. But everybody, it was only one family in there. One family, one head. Just like baptism puts us all under the headship of Jesus Christ. And then under that, Brother Keith, what the Bible says. Come on, read, Brother Keith. And of every living, every, thing, every living thing, of all flesh, of all, of all flesh, two of every sort, every sort, shall thou bring into the ark. You're going to bring in the ark. To keep them alive with thee. Life on the inside, death on the outside. Just same way with baptism. Life is on the inside. Death is on the outside. Come on, Brother Keith. They the shall be male yeah. and female. Oh, I wish I had time, Brother Keith, to deal with that. I don't have time. I don't have time to deal with that. What the Bible says. Come on, Brother Keith. A father after, after every after their, their time. time. Come on, read. And of cattle after, after their time. After their time. And of every creeping thing of, of the earth after, after his kind. After his kind. Two of every sort Two. shall come into thee watch, to look, keep them alive. I, I watch, watch this, Brother Keith. He said, when I was a little boy, I always wondered when I heard the story of Noah, how in the world could he gather all those animals together? But I found out he didn't have to do anything. The Bible said God was going to bring the animals to him. And it's the same as had time. It's the same with baptism. Because you don't realize the Bible said that we are called. We are called. We are called 2 Thessalonians 2.14. We are called by the gospel. That's what Jesus said, going to all the world, preach the gospel. He said, he that believes and is baptized. We are called, which I had time. Because in God's power, the Bible says that Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. God has drawing power. He has power to call us or to draw us from the world into his marvelous life. Wish I had time to show you that. But just jot that down in John chapter 6. Verse 44 and verse number 45, Jesus talked about how the Father draws. He used that power of the gospel to draw us. Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, verse number 6, Paul said, I marvel, you are so soon removed from him that called you to the grace of God to another gospel, which is not another. He used that power to call us, to draw us. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9, he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous life. Thank God for the call, the power of God, the power of God to draw us, to call us out of our past into a life with Jesus Christ. And then Brother Keith, the Bible said, Brother Keith got And take thou unto thee take of all food, food of all that is eaten. Come on, Keith. And thou shalt gather it to thee. Gather to and thee. And it shall be for food it's for thee. For food for thee. And for them. And for them. Come on. Thus did Noah according to all God that God commanded him. Thus did Noah according to all. That God commanded him. Everything God told him to do, that's exactly what he did. I want to know today, are you willing to do exactly what the Lord told you to do? Are you willing to do all that God told you to do? 
And I want you to understand now, this is my last point, Brother Keith. I jumped over a lot of points in this message, but I got to go to one more point to help somebody understand why they need to be baptized. Because as Peter makes this comparison, didn't have time to deal all with Peter in Matthew 24, 37, how the Bible said the way they live, and they didn't realize what was happening until that flood came and took them away. I don't have time to deal with all of the scriptures I had, Brother Keith, but I just want to just go to this last point. My time is gone, but I want to go to this last point. Now my point is simply this, that as Peter makes a comparison to Noah's ark, he makes a comparison to the ark to baptism. And he shows us, church, that the ark of Noah could not fail. When Noah went in that ark, he knew. He knew that everything was going to be all right. He knew that the ark was not going to fail him. And just like the ark could not fail him, baptism won't fail you today. Baptism will do exactly what it's meant to do. Peter said, baptism doeth also now. Say, how do you know, Brother Pounds? Because in chapter 7, verse number 1, that's my last scripture. So I think it's a mess, Brother Keith. No, that's my last scripture. Chapter 7, verse number 1. Chapter 7, Genesis 7, verse number 1. I want to just show you quickly. I'm, th I'm done. I'm through. I'm, it's, it's over. O-V-A. It's over. It's over. All right? Now, my, last, my, my last scripture. Chapter 7, verse number 1, Brother Keith. Watch and this the Lord said unto Noah. Now, I want you to watch this now. The ark of Noah couldn't sink. I said it could not sink. Because in chapter 7, verse number 1, the Bible says, And the Lord said to Noah, And the Lord said to Noah, Come thou, come thou, and all thy house in the ark. All right, hold on, Brother Keith. Hold on, Brother Keith. I just, I just told him that the ark couldn't sink. I just proved it. That the ark of Noah couldn't sink. All right, read it again, Brother, Brother Keith. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. And the Lord said, And the Lord said, Unto Noah, Unto Noah, Come thou, come thou, and all thy house, house into the ark. All right, first of all, Brother Keith, they missed it again. They missed it again. Everybody didn't get it. They didn't get it, Keith. One more time, Brother Keith, one more time. Now, and the Lord said, What's your point, Brother Powers? I want, to, I want you to see this, that the ark of Noah could not sink. Amen. Well, how do you know? Because the Bible told me. In chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord said, And the Lord said, Unto Noah, Unto Noah, Come thou, Come thou, And all the house, And all your house, Into the ark. Right, now, watch this now. Now, look, now, we got, we, we, we got to go now. We got to go to be back by 5 o'clock. I, I got to go. That's okay. Hold you long. Listen, the ark couldn't sink because, let me just show you this. If I went to Doc, Dr. Washington's office and, and Doc met me outside of his office and, and I saw him, I greeted him, and Doc would say, in his kindness, he would say, Sam, well, son, you, can, you just go into my office. I'll be there in just a moment. All right. But if I went to Doc's office, yeah. knocked on the door, and he was on the inside of the office, he wouldn't say to me, Sam, you can go in. He would say, Sam, you can come in. God didn't tell Noah to go in the ark. God told Noah to come in the ark, which meant the Lord was already. Well, y'all gonna help me here. In baptism, you are able to meet the Lord because the Lord is now waiting for you. In the waters of baptism. I gotta let you go this morning. Oh my goodness, way back in the Bible days. Noah told the people it's gonna rain. But when he told them, they paid him no mind. And when it happened, they were left behind. They tell me when the water began to pour, they knocked on the window, they knocked on the door. They didn't know exactly what to do. Now you don't want this to happen to you. Now Noah said, I'm sorry, my friend. God has the key and you can't get in. If something don't happen to the hearts of man, the very same thing is going to happen again. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. But it won't be water. But it's going to be fire next time. Is there somebody here this morning that need to say yes to Jesus Christ? Is there somebody here this morning need to put their faith in Jesus and come and get in the waters of baptism? The Lord is waiting for you. He's waiting for you in the water. Your salvation is waiting for you. It's waiting for you in the water. Your deliverance is waiting for you. It's waiting for you in the water. Come on and say yes to Jesus Christ. Peter said the like figure where it's a baptism. Do it also now. Save us 
not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. It's not just the idea of just getting in water because everybody that drowned was in water. He said, but it's more important than that. It's an answer. It's a, don't have time. Ooh, that's too much. And that's er, er, Epiero Teo. It is a request. It is appeal to God. It is appeal to God. That's the idea of calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, verse 16. But arise to be baptized and call on the name. You make your request to God in the waters of baptism. You make your appeal to God in the waters of baptism. Have you made your request to God today? Come on and say yes to Jesus. Having heard how Jesus died for you, was buried and rose again. That's the pattern, my friend. Follow the pattern. Are you willing today, having believed that, repent of your sin, confess faith in the fact that Jesus Christ is God's Son, and then be baptized in water for sin's remission? Live faithful unto death, and the Lord promised He'll give you a crown of life that won't fade away. Live faithful unto death, and He promised He'll give you a crown of life, my friend. You got to live faithful unto death. Even if it means death, you just hold on to God's unchanging hand. You remember the body of Christ today, and you're going astray. You come on back through a process of repentance, confession, and prayer. It's not between you and somebody else. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. You get yourself right with the Lord. Man may not forgive you, but thank God that God does. You come on and get yourself right with him. Or if you need prayer, I want you to come and meet me right here. Come on, right now. We're going to stand. We're going to stand walking. Come on to Jesus right now. Come on to the Lord.